Welcome to Lecture 1 on Federal Bureaucracy. Now, the Founding Fathers recognized that government would need a strong president at the top. After all, they gave the president absolute responsibility to take care that the laws be faithfully executed to put the laws into action. Although the framers did not tell the president exactly how to build the bureaucracy, they did give the president authority to nominate the principal officers of government and require their opinions in writing. Together, these two constitutional powers give the president general authority to lead the bureaucracy as well as the inherent power to act as administrator in chief. The framers expected Congress to establish the same departments that had existed under the Articles of Confederation, namely the Department of War, State, Treasury, and the Postal Service. At the same time, they gave the Senate the authority under its advice and consent power to confirm or reject the President's nominees. They also gave Congress the power to create new departments and agencies through legislation signed by the President, and the power to determine the number of federal employees, the budgets they administer, the taxes they collect. As the executive branch evolved over time, the departments and agencies of government became known as the bureaucracy, and their employees as bureaucrats. The French word for cloth covering of government desks is bureau. Add a short suffix to crossy, and the term bureaucracy becomes known as government by people at desk. So bureaucracies provide coordination, organization, specialization, and expertise for governments to perform tasks and services. Bureaucracy is defined as the complex structure of offices, tasks, rules, and principles of organization that are employed by all large-scale institutions to coordinate the work of their personnel. Each bureaucratic office has a set of tasks to perform and individuals assigned to perform those specialized tasks. Now these tasks may be routine or they may be politically charged. Bureaucracies can, in some cases, make important government policy. At its best, bureaucracy ensures fair, accountable administration performed by expert professionals. To provide services, bureaucracies often employ specialists or professionals. This ensures bureaucracies benefit from the skills and professional norms of their staff. When bureaucracies run well, it can be virtually invisible. When they fail, the results can often be spectacularly public and sometimes even tragic. Congress makes laws, but the legislation passed by Congress typically provides only general guidelines. It is up to the bureaucracy to fill in the blanks of these general dictates and translate those broad guidelines into concrete action through implementation and rulemaking. Implementation is defined as the efforts of departments and agencies to translate laws into specific bureaucratic rules and actions. Implementation is the process of converting policy into action. When laws passed by Congress are particularly vague, bureaucrats have broader latitude in how to interpret those laws and ensure that they are administered. Because Congress and the President could never pass laws with enough detail to address every aspect of implementation, these two branches give federal departments and agencies administrative discretion to implement the laws in the most efficient and effective manner possible. This freedom varies from agency to agency, mainly depending on both past performance and congressional politics at the time. Whether a law is ambiguous or clear, most agencies implement its provisions with three primary tools. One, rules for enforcing the law, which are produced through the rulemaking process. Two, through the revenues that they collect from individuals and corporations through taxes. And three, through the spending programs for providing benefits to society, for instance, Social Security and Medicare, and hiring employees, such as military personnel.
In addition to implementation, bureaucrats issue rules that provide more detailed and specific indications of what a given congressional policy will actually mean. Rules are designed to convert policies into action by, by providing detailed instructions to the government and the nation. These rules tell citizens, corporations, and the government itself what they can and cannot do, as well as what they must or must not do. Another word for rules in this context is regulations. Now the rules are drafted and reviewed under what's known as the Administrative Procedure Act of 1946, which is widely considered to be one of the most important laws regulating the bureaucracy. Once Congress passes a new law, the relevant agency studies the legislation and proposes a set of rules to guide its implementation. These proposed rules are then submitted to the White House Office of Budget and Management for review. Once cleared by the OMB, these rules are then published in the Federal Register. Publication marks the beginning of the public notice and comment period which gives all individuals and parties affected or interested in the proposed rule the chance to make their opinions known to the agency. Some agencies even hold hearings and take testimony from witnesses in the effort to build a strong case either for a particularly controversial rule. Some comment periods can last up to 180 days, but generally most are closed after 60. With every new rule and regulation, there is an associated cost. The chart we're looking at right now is the cumulative, economically significant final rules by administration in the first year in office. And now, if you look at each line that represents a different administration, you will see that the Biden administration currently, in the first year, has issued more rules that affect the uh, economy. Now, rules are essential for telling individuals industries and states what they must do to achieve economic and social goals that the government has set forth. But each one carries a cost. These costs have prompted a backlash against further regulation based on two complaints. First, the government rules impose costly paperwork and reporting burdens on industry. Two, industry spent a great deal of money on obeying rules through what experts call compliance costs. Building cleaner, more efficient power plants is expensive, for example, as is designing fuel-efficient cars. It also costs money to pay employees a minimum wage, provide family leave for the birth of a child or care for an aging parent, prevent workplace accidents, provide benefits such as health care coverage for employees with pre-existing medical conditions, and, examples seek federal approval for mergers with other corporations. I have a few examples of the cost of regulations. Example 1, the Department of Energy's Office of Energy Efficiency and Renewable Energy in February proposed new efficiency standards for consumer cooking appliances, claiming they would save a significant amount of energy. Roughly 38% of all U.S. households use gas stoves. As required by Congress, the Department of Energy is proposing efficiency standards for gas and electric cooktops, a department spokesman stated. We are not proposing bans on either. The proposed standards would not go into effect until 2027 and cumulatively save the nation up to $1.7 billion. Every major manufacturer has products that meet or exceed the requirements proposed today. Regulators estimated the new standards would raise upfront cost of gas stove products by $32.5 million per year while saving approximately $100.8 million annually with lower operating costs factored in. The Department of Energy has looked at the energy efficiency of gas stoves before. It is estimated that they will at best achieve a 3% increase in efficiency. Example number two, the National Marine Fisheries Service has created a rule that required charter boats to install on board an approved vessel monitoring system tracking device that continuously transmit the boat's GPS location to the service, whether the boat is being used for charter fishing, trip, or something else. Charter boat operators are responsible for the 
MS units, which the final rule estimated would cost upwards to almost $3,000 plus a monthly service fee of $40 to $75. The Mexican fishing company sued the U.S. Department of Commerce over this rule. The U.S. Court of Appeals for the Fifth Circuit has set aside the controversial final rule issued by the National Marine Fishery Service, which required the GPS tracking. The court wrote, in promulgating this regulation, the government committed multiple independent Administrative Procedure Act violations and very likely violated the Fourth Amendment. Example 3. Senator John Tester, Democrat from Montana, announced on March 1st he will join Senator Joe Manchin of West, West Virginia in voting to overturn a Biden administration rule that permits money managers to consider environmental, social, and governments in deciding where to invest retirement funds. At a time when working families are dealing with higher costs from health care to housing, we need to focus on ensuring Montanians' retirement savings are on the strongest footing possible, Tester stated. I'm opposing this Biden administration rule because I believe it undermines retirement accounts for working people in Montana and is wrong for my state, end quote. Now, the GOP-controlled House of Representatives voted on February 28th to repeal the rule through the Congressional Review Act, which allows Congress to repeal regulations within 60 days of enactment. So those are just some of the few examples of the cost of regulations that uh, bureaucrats and bureaucracies along with the Biden administration are seeking to impose. Now there's just like I said if you look at the chart here um, there have been a significant number of regulations that have been uh, created by the new administration and uh, the associated cost of those has not fully been measured. We're going to end this uh, presentation here and then we will follow up uh, with a few review questions and we'll start with the next PowerPoint. Thank you.